I've been mic'd up all day, I can't tell y'all. I swear. I do know so much about football. Y'all boys doubting my IQ now? Boy, doubt my IQ now that I'm mic'd up. You feel me? Doubt my IQ now that I'm mic'd up. Uh, freshman year, I was at a school, Seton Hill University. I was there for a year. Uh, played all right, nothing too crazy. Had some family issues, so I wanted to get closer to home. Then I went to Warwick Community College. Went there for the fall of, so it would be 2016. Came here in the spring. Our team didn't do as well as we wanted to. We went about four and seven. And then I ended up starting, and they gave me the chance, and I just tried to make the most out of every, every opportunity I got and happened to get a lot of opportunities, and I just made the most out of them. Then, you know, junior year, we did, did really well. Team was, team was doing well. Now, in senior year, I'm just going to see what, see what happens now. <laughs> well, you're looking sweet as a candy bar. <laughs> oh, tried to get me. Oh, my God, work him, Diego. Me? No, nah, nah, I had a uh, out. Yeah. Oh. You sat it down. Yeah. Who did he throw to? Oh, yeah, Yago! Boom, 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 boom. Did it finish, though? That's a little chihuahua right there. No animals were harmed in making this video. It shows in how he practices. He's one of the leaders of the offense and certainly in the offensive core. Uh, he's not, but he'll tell you, ah, he had a good practice yesterday. Not there yet. Anytime anyone has a good day, and then says, no, nah, it's not good enough yet. You just know that that person's always going to be successful in everything they do. You know, at first he comes in, he's one of those guys that, you know, no scholarship, and all of a sudden, you know, he just works his way into a full scholarship role, starting role, full scholarship role. And the thing I liked about Coach Ambrose is he just didn't give it to him, you know what I'm saying? So Shane actually played the season as a walk-on last year as a first-teamer, you know what I'm saying, which says a lot about his work ethic. Says a lot about the kid coming out there every day and just knowing how to work. I think he's probably one of the best coaches in Division One football, football, college football in general. Like the way he, the way he sees the game, how he looks at one practice and drills the next practice. He works on stuff that we didn't do well that practice, and he'll just um, he just uses all the weapons he has, all the techniques. He knows a lot of coaches, so. You know, he'll call the coaches, all the stuff he learned in college in the NFL, even the Canadian League, we, he, we're using all that. So it's good to have his perspective and just the way he attacks things. He knows how to, he knows how to do it, he knows how to win Virginia Tech. I don't think he's ever even coached a losing season except maybe one of them. So like, he's a, he's a winner and he knows how to play, the, play and coach the receiver position. If you take, I think within two games, he has a thousand yards as a walk-on in the best FCS league. You know what I mean? The kid's ceiling is amazing. You know what I'm saying? Scouts that I talk to all the time, I tell them, I say, look, I think this is a kid that's going to deserve a shot. I think he has to stay healthy. Um, but I definitely think that he could legitimately have a shot at the next level. Nobody's sitting here saying the kid's going to go out there and get drafted, but I think the kid has the potential to be able to play at the next level, absolutely. The blessing in, in my journey of getting to the NFL was it wasn't the nine-year career. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't a 20-year career, but it was enough of that taste to where I'm in Baltimore, I'm around the Ray Lewis's, the Ed Reeds, the Wilson McGee's. But it's definitely transition because they do navigate to that. But I'm always here to tell them, look, y'all think it's easy. I can remember getting there and Derek Mason pulling me aside and say, look, this is uh, you know, so I feed my family, my mortgage, you know what I mean? So it's easy for me to tell those guys, hey, it's easy. If you, you think it's easy just to get there, it's beyond. You know what I'm saying? You got to be able to be able to also maintain it. And I think going back with Shane playing the next level, that's going to be his biggest step now is the off the field. And not to mention the, the study, the time that you be able to put in to be a professional football player. A lot of people think it's easy. Ray Lewis used to always say it's like two candles burning at the end. You know what I'm saying? The football career is burning. What are you doing with your pastime? Let's see if you can burn fast. So um, I love the, the opportunity. I'm right back in my backyard again, back in Baltimore. And uh, Coach Ambrose is giving me this opportunity to be up here and be able to, to, to share my journey and share my story with these kids, man. It makes coaching uh, that much easier, absolutely. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. My Lord and Savior, Jabari Christ. Uh, the room is amazing. It's just like everybody in there. You all have strengths and weaknesses, so you like look at the guy next to you and you're like, you can help him, like what, what can he work on? He can come back at you, like what you can work on. And everybody in there, it's like, it's no drop off. Like everybody's good players. I just happened to get more chances last year, so. But like, we even there's guys like Caleb Smith that 
he's unknown right now, but he's a really good guy. And Ryan Rutkowski, there's so many guys in that room that can play, and they're going to show up this year a lot. They haven't really got the chance, but they're going to get the chance this year, and it's going to be just that room. Just there's so much depth, and there's no, no drop-off in talent. It's just talent all around the room. Put this on camera right here for the hard, for the, for the hard knocks. We're going to talk to Gillette real quick. Gillette getting burnt real quick. Look at him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, it's been awesome. I had no idea what his like coming in here last year. I mean, once Shane was one of the first guys. Hey, let's get let's throw. You know, about texting him, he'll definitely be there throwing. And his work ethic is crazy. You know, it's something that I noticed. And I didn't. I had no idea about his story until I sat down and started to know him. And I was like, man, I think you're a little bit crazier than I am. His journey to get to here is different. Is you know, and the things that he's been through. I think that's why me and him have a great relationship, you know. We're just really good hard workers. We've, we're grateful for being in this position, and we live together now, so we're, we're having fun. But uh, we hope to have a lot of fun on the, on the field, too. There's a trust level that is gained through the crucible of the game that I know I can count on this guy. And the good teams are the ones that you can count on these guys all the time. Their relationship is special because they truly do, like, Shane, Shane will realize I'm not open in the moment, but I'm getting open, and he's trusting Tom's going to put the ball where it needs to be ahead of time. Same thing conversely. Tom realizes that Shane's not open, but he's going to be, and he puts the ball there before it ever happens. That's trust, and it comes with a bunch of hard work that happens when you guys aren't watching. I mean, it's, it's awesome having a guy like that, and not only that, but he's also just someone who attracts you. Attract, you're attracted to him. You, know, you want to be around Shane because of the energy that he brings to the practice field and everything. It's awesome when he's there. We're a different team when he's out there, honestly. So just having him around, his work ethic, like I said, it's awesome. He just brings the whole team up and he makes everyone better. Tom's having a great camp. Uh, he's taken what he's done last year and improved upon it. His overall knowledge of what we're doing, why he's an incredibly intelligent guy, is on a different level than it was a year ago. Um, he's still the same passer, he's still the same athlete, but he's taken the intellectual part of the game and kind of raised the game, and therefore he's raising the game for everybody around. One of the advantages he has over really most of us is the amount of college offenses he's been a part of. Um, and a lot of times you think of that as a negative, like, you know, you never really get, you know, in phase with one particular offense or whatever. But he has taken a lot of, uh, he's taken the best out of those different, you know, uh, situations and he brings them to us every day. He was here last year and I knew he, was an imp he had an impact on our offense with the running backs. But you know, being with him over the spring, you know, there's no reason why me and him won't have a great relationship. The relationships that you build with coaches and teammates over a season, you know, the ups and the downs and the struggles that you go through, even in camp, you, you, get, a, you get a different bond. So um, I think that me and him will have an awesome relationship. We already started off really well in the spring. And I think he has a really great understanding of football. You know, he has an awesome understanding of drop back quarterback, which is awesome because I think it's going to really help me. And uh, like I said, just pick his brain and take things from him that I can use for myself. He comes out and he competes and pushes himself every single day, whether it's in 11 on 11, one on ones, individual, like when we're an individual, he is competing against himself. Um, so someone that has that competitive nature about them, I, I don't, I don't, I don't see there being a ceiling on them because they are, they're, they're never going to accept that. He's not going to accept that. He's the most competitive person I've ever been around. I can't be any more grateful for what Towson and Coach Ambrose have given me, you know, the ability to go out there and play and kind of get back to what I did in high school. It's been a lot of fun. You know, there'll always be a spot in my, in my, you know, my mind of where of Towson and how, how, how much I love it here and how much I am I'm grateful for them and the opportunity I got. What would you have said if Tom was not? I hate him. <laughs> I don't like him. He thinks he's funny. He's not. Uh, he always he calls me short a lot. I'm six foot two. He doesn't get that. That's about it. And he always tucks in his shirt. I don't like that. That's about it, though.